I'm here to grab you by the shoulders and say, baby, you can do it. Where's my favorite one? It's behind my ear, of course. Listen to those crystals shake. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. Oh my goodness. I am so excited for today's video. Can you hear the cars honking? Everybody is so excited. Everyone's lining up outside to hear this video. Could you even imagine that would be really wild? No, I don't I don't even know how they don't. Oh, my pen fell out. It's not a pen, it's a brush, but I put it behind my ear because I thought it would make me look smarter. It makes me look like at any time I could just be like, ah, oh, yes, of course, let me take a note on that. But I can't actually take a note of it because it's a, it's a brush. It's not a real pen, but I, you know what? I stand by this. I'm putting it back in my hair. I feel like this is something like an engineer would do. Ooh, no, an architect. An architect would totally put a pen behind their ear because then they could take it out and be like, ah, oh, yes, let me draw this building. I'll draw that building off for you real quick. Oh my goodness. It's really, I blow myself away in every intro of my video with just the sort of nonsense I can talk about. But that's not what this video is about. You did not click on this video to listen to me chat about how smart I look with this brush behind my ear. No, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in me answering all of your graphic liner questions. Ah, uh, I need to actively remind myself not to yell. I am in an apartment building. I do have people above and below me. We, we've got to keep our composure, you guys. I know it's hard not to scream because we're really excited. So the other day, I had this idea. You know, I was thinking, man, I've made so much graphic liner content and I love every second of it, but I'm starting to feel like, you know, I'm hitting a wall. Like what new do I have to offer for you guys? So I had an idea to put out a little Q and A, ask you guys to ask me some questions about graphic liner and you guys, freaking knocked it out of the park. You guys asked so many questions, so many good questions that I never would have thought of myself, but I now have so many video ideas and oh my gosh, I just can't thank you enough for asking your questions. I'm gonna say right at the beginning of the video that this will not be the last of my answering your graphic liner questions. I'm gonna make this a whole series. I have specific videos planned for specific questions, so feel free to drop even more graphic liner related questions in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get to you. So, if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want me to answer all of your graphic liner questions, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching. It's coming at you right now. Alrighty, so I tried to pick questions that kind of correlated with each other so I could, you know, naturally go into things and to show you visuals for everything. So if you don't hear your question answered in this video, like I said, I got so many ideas up here in this big brain of mine. You can tell it's a big brain because I got a little brush behind my ear. But the first question, and I thought this question was so lovely, what products should I explore to get into graphic liner without spending a ton of money? Incredible. Such a good question. A question I had myself a year ago when I started getting into graphic liner. And I have so many resources for you that I'm going to share now, but this is another one. I'm probably going to make a whole video about it, so subscribe. But the first thing I'd like to talk about is obviously the liners. What are activated liners can tend to be on the pricier side. I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure what's if it's like cost of materials or anything, but they can tend to be on the pricier side. And that's why I personally put off trying graphic liner for a long time. But there are some more affordable options and there's ways to practice before you even have water activated liners. I saw some TikTok video last year of somebody making their own liquid eyeliner using concealer and eyeshadow. And I kind of adapted that by using concealer and liquid lipstick and mixing them together. And that's how I made my liners to do graphic liner. But obviously, you know, there's companies that make colorful liquid liners, like NYX is an affordable brand that makes colorful liquid liners, or you could just buy a black liquid liner. It doesn't even need to be colorful. In fact, the one that has my favorite brush at the drugstore, which I'm gonna recommend if you wanna buy a drugstore brush that costs $2 right now, buy the e.l.f. Precision Liquid Liner. This liquid eyeliner from e.l.f. is amazing. I don't even like liquid eyeliner so much anymore, but I would still buy this because the brush is excellent. It's a paint brush tip. It resembles most graphic liner brushes that you would buy yourself. So you could even just buy this for the brush. After I finished the liquid eyeliner, I rinsed off the brush and continued to use it. That's a tip I learned from Cut Creaser, who you'll probably hear me talk about a million times today because Cut Creaser is like who inspired me to get into graphic liner. But she gave me that tip a year ago and I was like, fantastic, phenomenal. So that's a great affordable brush option for you. But I know we weren't talking about brushes yet. We're talking about liners. What I would recommend 
recommend to be the best, most affordable graphic liner set for beginners would be from B. Taylor Beauty. B. Taylor Beauty is an indie brand, they are wonderful, and this palette costs $35, which I know still sounds like a lot, but it does also come with a free brush. It didn't come with a free brush when I bought it, which is fine, it's okay but it does come with a free brush, so that's already gonna set you off on a good foot. And the other thing I like about B. Taylor Beauty is if you don't wanna spend the $35 on one of these palettes, they make mini three gram liners for $4.50. And to give you an idea of what three grams looks like, I don't have them from B. Taylor Beauty, but I have a three gram liner from By Mel Wops, and it looks like this, and there's still a ton of product in here. Because the thing with water activated liners is they will last you forever, even my most 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 used shade of my three gram liners is this black shade i use this all the time and i've had it for a year and you can see i've i've heartily hit pan but i still have so much left so don't feel like you need to buy a big 10 gram pot when you're just starting out i love that b taylor beauty has the option for the three gram ones i think that's great i also know for my european friends that glisten cosmetics offers a smaller size which they only charge ten dollars for i know that's more than 450 but i you know that's just to give you an option you know definitely more affordable than their full size which is like 17 dollars so look out for companies that have a smaller size of water activated liners and don't feel like you need Need to buy a big one that would be my greatest advice to you but if you do want to buy a palette I would recommend the B Taylor Beauty palettes $35 they have a primary one and a pastel one the primary one is the one I would recommend because you can basically create any color out of these colors it also has a black a white and a silver which can be used to make any shade metallic so really really user friendly i recommended this to multiple people before as a great beginner option for you another option that's even cheaper than the b taylor beauty palette would be the midas cosmetics bitch and cake liner palette i recently did a review on this recently i think it was in february ma'am but <laughs> this is a, a really good palette if you want to watch my full review on it i also love the midas cosmetics formula this palette is not a primary palette you know it's definitely a more specific color story but you do still get a good variety of greens and pinks and pastels and metallic and a mustard which is wonderful and a burgundy which is wonderful and this is only $22 which is amazing and it could be even less if you use a discount code I happen to have a discount code the code is Giovanna it'll save you 20% that is an affiliate code I do heartily stand by this product though and I promise I would not recommend it to you if I wasn't in love with it I did purchase this product with my own money before I was a Midas affiliate so I really really love this palette at $22 I think after the 20% off it'll only cost you something like $16 baby that's a steal for nine shades and these don't have a ton of product in them either but again it's going to take you so long to get through it it's going to blow your mind how long it lasts so that is another good option for an affordable water activated liner and then i know i already mentioned that elf brush which is a great option you can go get that right now at your local drugstore or you could hop onto amazon and buy yourself some nail art brushes i saw another graphic liner creator recommend these last year and i ended up picking them up and i love them these are the beetles gel polish brushes they are for gel nail polish but I use them on my eyes and they work great they also have crystals in the middle which is really fun listen to those crystals shake these are phenomenal you can see they come in many different sizes they have a really tiny detail brush a slightly bigger one honestly this one and that one look almost the same but this one's like a little smaller then this one's a little bigger and then this one's super big and long so you really cover all of your brushes in this set and the set is only like $8.99 which is just amazing and like I said I was able to get these on Amazon so that was really convenient for me. I always recommend nail art brushes because they're really identical to like high-end graphic liner brushes you can buy. And then my last affordable option for you would be paint brushes. Head on down to Michaels, head on down to AC Moore, head on down to whatever craft store exists where you live and check out the paint brush section. I got this brush, look you can see it's from the craft store, it's still got its little label on here. I got this brush for like $2.99 at Michaels and it's an awesome brush. It's got a nice thin but flat tip. This is great. I love it so much. So definitely don't be afraid to check out the craft store. You know, if you think about it, you're painting your face. So it's essentially doing the same thing as what you would intend to do on paper. Just look for their tiny detail brushes. I tend to go for the smallest ones they have. And those tend to be a lot cheaper than makeup brushes. So that's a great thing. There's a lot of options for when you're just starting out. If you don't want to, you don't even need to buy water activated liner right now. If you just want to start practicing with graphic shapes. I have a whole video 
video on how to do graphic liner with eyeshadow that I'll link down below. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna make a whole video on this topic. So I know I already talked about it a lot, but there's so much more I could say. But that is my current answer to what products you should explore when getting into graphic liner when you don't wanna spend a lot of money. Alrighty, the next question I wanna answer, I got a lot of this question, and that question is tips for doing graphic liner on hooded eyes. Now the tips I'm gonna give you are not just gonna be good for hooded eyes, they're gonna be good for any eye that has some sort of a fold. In fact, here's a little clip of my eyes that I took earlier, um, because I feel like I used to say I had hooded eyes all the time, and then some people were like, no, you have deep set eyes, no, you don't have hooded eyes, and then I heard somebody say there's something called a double lid, which I think I might have. Either way, I definitely have a fold in my eyes, so I have found ways to work around that quite literally, and I'm going to share those with you today. So if you have a fold in your lid, and that's the reason you haven't been trying graphic liner so far, I'm here to grab you by the shoulders and say, baby, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. You can 100% do it. In fact, I do it every day. You just have to go about it a little bit differently. And here's a clip of me applying some liner here. And basically what I do is I look forward so I can see the fold in my eye. I can see where that fold is gonna line up when I'm looking straight on at someone. And then I just go above that. It sounds so simple, it sounds so easy, but so many people just don't consider the entirety of their lid space as lid space. Typically when we think of lid space, people think of just the lid that's covering your eyeball, which I feel like for most people, I mean for most people who have hooded eyes or who have a fold in their eye, that space is very tiny. My space, when I just look forward on my actual eyelid, there's not a lot of space there. The only thing I really have space to do on that area of my eye eyelid is a wing, maybe a slightly bolder wing, but there's not a lot of room to do a whole lot else. So what I do is I take advantage of all of this real estate above my lid. I mean, look at the graphic liner I have on here today. First of all, look at the graphic liner I have on here today. Isn't it fun? I like it so much. I tried to do a little like palette type of thing. Oh, I don't know. It's not what this video is about, but you can see that the space that all of this is happening in is above my eyelid. I probably shouldn't have worn lashes, but you see my fold right here? Like when I go like this, you can't see any of the wing at all, but you can still see all of my art that's happening around here. So you just really need to take advantage of this space up here. I feel like it's such a simple thing that so many people don't think about, and I personally didn't think about until I saw Cut Creaser talking about it on her Instagram a lot. She does this wonderful thing where people can send her pictures of their eyes with no makeup on and she'll show you where to place the graphic liner. It's so, so helpful. You should totally follow Cut Creaser on Instagram. And if any of you wanna do that for me as well, I'm also happy to do that for you. Not trying to steal her gig or anything, but I'm happy to do that for you if you wanna get more of an immediate response from someone who doesn't have like 300,000 Instagram followers. But yeah, all of this to say, you just gotta utilize the real estate up here. Don't be afraid to use this space. Oh, and then my other tip for doing eyeliner on hooded eyes is when you're doing your liner, it can be very tempting to keep your eye closed like this as you're going which is not necessarily friendly for us hooded eyed friends. You know, you wanna keep your eyes open and looking straight forward so that you know what it's going to look like when you are living your real life. You know, you don't walk around going like this all day. You walk around looking straight forward all day, so do your makeup the same way. Even before I was doing graphic liner and I would just do my regular black winged liner every day, I always wondered why my wings just looked a little off. They always looked kind of rounded after I was done, and it was because I was doing them with my eyes completely closed and don't ever stretch your skin out like that like no 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 no. that's a big no no I used to see people do that all the time you're just following what other people do is that you kind of stretch your skin out to make it easier to draw your line on a straight surface but when you do that once you let go of it then it goes back to looking curved again so my greatest piece of advice for my hooded eye friends is to do your eyeliner with your eyes relaxed and open because that is the only way that you will truly get straight looking lines and have your makeup look good when you actually have your eyes open. So yeah, I know that was a little rambly. Let me know if I can clarify that at all for you. I also do have a specific video called Graphic Liner for Hooded Eyes where I give lots more hooded eye tips and I'll link it down below for you. 
But yeah, those are my tips for hooded eyes. Let me zoom you out for the next question. And the next question was a really good one. And the question is, how do you know you've mixed the water and cake liner enough to start lining? Which is an amazing question because it's, it's quite a tricky line to walk here between too much water and not enough water. You want to have enough water that you can actually make a liner because the product is solid when you get it, right? So it's water activated. It's in the name. It's incredible. So you have to dip your brush in water and then activate it with that water. And you've probably seen many different videos of people using many different amounts of water. I find that when they do swatching videos, they use a lot of water or when companies are like showing you what it looks like, they use extra water. But I promise you, you don't need that much water to make it into an eyeliner. And I'm going to show you this visual now where you can see me dipping my brush into my little cup of water and then going right into the cake liner, swirling it around. That gave me a good start, but I found that I wanted to dip back just one more time to get a little more water in there. And once I feel like it's a consistency that I have enough liquid to pick up, but it's not so watery that I can see a pool of water sitting on top of it. And I'll show you what it looks like when you have too much water sitting on top of it too. If you ever have like a layer of liquid above the cake that's like completely covering the dry part, that's my sign that you have too much water. You should have a spot in the center, like you have a little circle in the middle where you wet it enough to make it into a consistency and that's good enough. But if it does get too liquidy, you can still work with it. You just want to be really careful to wipe the brush off, whether it's on your hand first or whether it's scraping it off on the side here. You can see I took some swatches on my hand of what it looks like when you have a good consistency, your lines will be really nice and thin and they won't bleed at all. And if you have a water activated liner that has too much water in it, you'll see the line is much thicker. It immediately bleeds and it takes a really, really long time to dry down. So that's the reason why you don't want to add too much water to water activated liner because you might still be able to, you know, it's probably a thicker line, but if that's what you're going for, that could be fine. But then the issue is it will drip on your eye and that's just like so frustrating if you just did a beautiful line and then you go to walk away or do something else and it just starts dripping down your eye. So that is my advice to know if you've mixed enough water into the cake liner to start lining. And that question leads me super smoothly into another highly asked question, which is how to prevent your lines from getting too thick or how to prevent inconsistency of thickness in your lines. So the reason I feel like those two questions tied so perfectly together is because they have similar answers. The greatest way to keep your lines from getting too thick, although you know that's kind of subjective, depends on how thick you want your lines, but to avoid thick lines, you should avoid adding too much water to your water activated liner. Because like I just showed you, if you add too much water, it creates a really thick line and can sometimes drip, but there is a little more to it than that. Another way you can keep your lines nice and thin and sharp is by wiping off your brush on the side of the water activated liner pot. Because the greatest thing you can have in a brush for graphic liner is having that tip be as small and sharp as possible. And that's another reason why I love nail art brushes so much is because they're made super, super thin and precise because of the tiny surface area that you have working on somebody's nails. And we want to take that same energy into when we're working with graphic liner. So wiping off the side of the brush, no matter what kind of brush you have. And if you are using eyeshadow, which I mentioned before, if you don't have any liners to work with and you're just using eyeshadow, something you can do to make your eyeshadow brush super sharp is to put lash glue on it. You put the lash glue on the tip of your eyeliner brush or your angled liner brush, whether it's brows or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then you press really hard to make it super, super sharp. And then you let it dry. And then you can use that to go to your eyeshadow with it and get nice, thin, precise lines. You can use that, which is dry eyeshadow, or you can mix your eyeshadow together with a mixing medium to make like a kind of paste type of thing or a liquid paste. Ugh, paste is a gross word. Why don't I like the word paste? I think because it makes me think of tomato paste and tomato paste gross me out because it just looks like red toothpaste. That's besides the point though. Back to the video. Like I was saying though, the sharper your brush is the better and you can achieve that super easily by just wiping it off on the side there. And my last recommendation for getting your lines to be consistent would be to start with a thin line and thicken 
as you go. Basically every time I do my eyeliner, I like to sketch out my shape first. So I go in with two very, very thin lines and then I will go back over them and thicken them later. It's so much easier to add product than to take away product. Although we're gonna talk about how to take away product in just a second here, but it's so much easier to add product than to take away product. So I super recommend going in with super, super thin lines to start as thin as you possibly can and then thicken them as you go. And that is a great way to get consistent lines. Another great way to get consistent lines and to get your eyes to match, because that was a big question I got asked. A lot of people were saying they have trouble getting both eyes to match when they do graphic liner and like same, I same, absolutely same. But the way I have found the most success in making my eyes match is by going back and forth. I don't do one full eye. Like when I did this eye look today, I was going back and forth the whole time. I would never just go in and do all of these small details and then try to recreate the same thing on the other eye. What I do is I start with my top lines and then I do the top line on both sides and I do just the outline of the top line. Remember, we start with a thin line and we thicken it later. Top line, then top line. Connecting line, then connecting line. Thicken it, thicken it, add the wing, add the wing, and then I go in and add my little triangle detail and do the same thing on that side. And then I go back and forth with the dots and back and forth. And I just keep going back and forth so that my focus is always on the full picture, the full picture of the eyes. I definitely used to do this when I was first getting into makeup and graphic liner where I would do one full eye and then try to recreate the full eye. I even find that with eyeshadow now. Sometimes I'll really get into doing an eyeshadow look and I'll do the full look on one eye. And I inevitably, every time I try to recreate it on the other eye, it does not look the same. It does not even close to match. I think just because we get a little cocky after doing it on the first eye and then we get a little too confident on the second eye and then it doesn't look quite the same. So that's my biggest recommendation for you would just to be do it in pieces and keep going back and forth. And that'll ensure that your lines stay more consistent with each other and that they can be more likely to match each other. But also, can I get real with you for a second? Sometimes at the end of the day, nobody's gonna notice that they don't fully match unless you point it out. Guess what, my eyes today, they don't fully match, but I threw a lash on so you can't really tell. And if you can tell, please don't tell me because that will hurt my feelings. If you are looking at yourself from way back here, if you're looking at yourself from a distance and they match, that's great, they match. Don't, don't look at it in a zoomed in mirror because nobody else is gonna look at you like that. Oh, I also forgot to mention, use your eyebrow as a starting point on both sides to ensure that you get an even starting point to your line. But that is my advice for you on how to keep your lines consistent, not too thick, and to have them match each other. All right, so I also received a lot of questions about brushes, and I know I already told you guys about a bunch of affordable brushes, and I stand by those all as being super high quality brushes that will give you beautiful graphic liner looks. But I do wanna tell you about my absolute favorite brushes, and they are the By Mel Lops X Cut Creaser Collaboration Brushes. They came out with a set of four brushes. Where's my favorite one? It's behind my ear, of course. Course. It came with the C4 brush, which is this beautiful angled brush. I definitely use this one the least, I would say. That's not true, I probably use this one the least. But I don't reach for this one a whole ton just because it definitely creates a thicker line and I tend to like to go in with thinner lines. But where I find success with this one is doing inner corner lines. Like if you're trying to bring your liner out a little more this way or if you're trying to really get into that inner corner, this is really, really great for that. But honestly, it mostly just reminds me of a standard angle liner brush, so I don't really feel like you need, need the C4 brush. Then you have the C3 brush, which is probably my least used brush. It is really good for long lines. Like if you're trying to do like a long line, I like that I'm demonstrating about my eyebrow. But I feel like this brush is probably best for like doing like face stuff, you know, if you're trying to really do long lines, because you can see just how long it drags on your face for. I mean, you'll definitely get a full line without really having to stop in the middle, where sometimes with my C2 brush, I like to stop in the middle, pick up more product, and then finish it. And then we have the C2 brush, which I keep talking about and I had behind my ear this whole time because it's my favorite brush in the whole world. If I could recommend one brush for you to absolutely invest in, and it's really not that much of an investment because it's $8 on its own, it would be the Cut Creaser C2 brush. It's wonderful. It's the only brush I use most days, to be honest. Pretty much every day I only use this brush unless I want to do smaller details, in which case I use a slightly smaller brush.
brush. There is an even shorter brush that comes in the cut creaser set. I can't find mine anywhere, but that just goes to show you how little I use it because this brush is so good for everything. It's good for small details and it's good for long lines. But the brush looked pretty much like this. It looked pretty much like this Beatles nail art brush. It just had a really small tip. It was good for small details and for doing like doodles and things. I like to use a tiny brush like this for when I'm doing little doodles on my eyes and things, but I didn't use it for these circles today. Do you want to know what I use for these circles today? The bottom of my brush. Isn't that amazing? So many eyeshadow brushes have a little tiny rounded tip at the end, and if you just dip them in some water and then swirl them around in your water activated liner, you can put little dots on your eyes and they look so cute and they're always little perfect circles because the bottom of the brushes are perfect circles. So that's a fun tip for how to use your brushes in an unusual way you might not have expected them for. Like I said, doesn't even need to be liner brushes, can be any eyeshadow brush. But yeah, to answer the question of what are the best brushes, I truly do feel like the By Mel Lops Cut Creaser brushes are the highest quality. I mean, the nail art brushes are an incredibly close second. They are also super high quality. It's like the By Mel Lops brushes are up here and the Beatles gel polish brushes are like right here. Like they're so close. They're so close. You're not even really going to notice a difference, but I do slightly prefer the By Mel Lops ones, but they're both really good and I'll link them all down below for you to go check out. Alrighty, I think this is going to be my last question for today because I know I've already been talking for so, so long, but maybe I'll do two. I don't know. We'll see. But another question that I got asked quite a few times, which I can totally relate to, is how to keep your hands from shaking when you're doing graphic liner. Because obviously we're going for nice, smooth, crisp lines here and shaky hands can make that very difficult. But I have found a few tips for how to keep my hands a little more steady when doing my graphic liner. My first tip is going to sound dumb. I'm sorry it's going to sound dumb, but it is a good tip, which is to try not to drink too much caffeine before you do your graphic liner. I know it's hard. I know it's hard, especially when you do it in the morning, but I found that I was doing my graphic liner in the morning at the same time as drinking my coffee and my hands got a lot shakier than when I didn't do that. So that would be a tip for me to you is to try to hold off on the caffeine until after you've done your graphic liner or just drink like a big glass of water right before you do it. I know I find that that always helps me a little bit too. But then my other tip, which I think is the most helpful tip if you want to tell me to get lost with a coffee tip, fair, understandable, but this tip is great. So the way I steady myself when doing my graphic liner is I lean on my face. I actually have a video clip of me doing exactly that thing here today so you can see it, but you can see that I have my palm just like right under my eye there. And I find that when I rest my palm on my face like that, it makes it a lot easier to steady myself. Now when doing this, I would recommend doing your eye makeup first, you know, so you don't mess up your face makeup because even if you don't think it's going to mess up your face makeup, I know when I've tried to do my face makeup first and then do that tip, I definitely feel less comfortable leaning on my face because I'm thinking about trying not to mess up my face makeup. So I always recommend when doing graphic liner that you do it before your base makeup. But leaning on my face like that has definitely helped me to steady my hand. That in combination with trying not to get on the caffeine too much. And the last thing, I feel like this is going to sound like another silly tip, but is just to try not to worry about it so much. And I know telling people not to worry like never keeps them from worrying. But when I first started doing graphic liner, I was like, you know what? I'm just having fun with it. Granted, you know, I started during panoramic times, so I wasn't really worried about going anywhere. I know it's harder when you have to go somewhere afterwards, but try to pick a time to practice graphic liner where you're not going anywhere and you're not leaving the house or you're not going anywhere where you need to look a certain way, because that way you can really just kind of fearlessly go in and practice. Pick a time where you can just relax and it doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, it's makeup that comes off at the end of the day. It also, when it's water activated liner comes off literally with water. It comes off so easily. A lot of you asked me how to fix your graphic liner mistakes. And if you're using water activated liner, you can quite literally fix it by using a wet Q-tip. If you want to use a Q-tip to make your line thinner, you want to take off the first layer of the Q-tip. I know that sounds nuts, but if you take off the top part of the Q-tip, then it reveals like a thinner tip, which gets it a little sharper. So I find that that makes it easier to fix lines that way. But then and you can also just completely wipe off the line and start over and that's really easy too. Alrighty, so I think with that, that is going to be the last of the graphic liner questions that I answered today. But like I said in the beginning, this is a series, baby. You just got yourself hooked on a new series coming at you next week on HBO. Just kidding. It's coming at you on YouTube and it's me and I have to make the videos. But I definitely want to do more videos in this series. You guys asked so many questions and they were all so, so 
good. My Beginner's Guide to Graphic Liner, the Complete Beginner's Guide to Graphic Liner, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that is Graphic Liner is coming at you probably like next week. Like I'm really thinking about it. I got lots of stuff planned for it and I have lots of good in-depth advice to give you. But like I've mentioned many times throughout this video, I have so many corresponding videos that you can watch in the meantime about Graphic Liner, Water Activated Liner, Hooded Eye specific tutorials, how to incorporate Graphic Liner into eyeshadow looks. So there is so much content that you can watch in the meantime to practice. Like I said in the beginning too, feel free to ask me more Graphic Liner questions down below for future Graphic Liner Q&A videos. I would love to hear from you. And also check out my description box for all of the makeup on my face today, as well as a bunch of Black Lives Matter resources, resources to support the Asian American community, and LGBTQ plus resources for Pride Month, because it's Pride Month. It's June, baby. And I'm going to be highlighting some specific organizations that I want you to check out down below. I always have a big, I guess I could call it a social justice corner. I don't want to steal Smokey Glow's thing, but it is kind of a little social justice corner I got down in the description box. So if you're looking to make some positive change, definitely check out those links down below. And I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!